Hello everyone and welcome back to another great segment of Real Talk Raheem with your favorite host, yep, me. And guess what? Today I'm at a secret location and I am interviewing a young man who comes to us by way of Florida. You're from West Palm Beach, Florida. Yes, West Palm Beach. All right. Oh yeah. This young man I want to introduce, LJ Ugarte, to the show. What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Real Talk. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Definitely, definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. go ahead and tell us a little bit about you and what projects you're working on right now. Well, I'm an actor and singer. I'm currently working on a project um, from that in development. I'm working on a documentary, which I'm really excited about. It's passionate. I've been working about pretty much a long time. I've been, I think, about a year. Mm -hmm. It's in development. And I'm also developing a horror film called Darkness and Fear. I'm pretty excited about it. It's pretty cool. So let's, it's gritty, you know? Okay, let's talk about the documentary first. Okay, okay. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the documentary is pretty much a behind-the-scenes look about my life. It's like uh, how an artist built, you know, developed and built and built and built. It's pretty much like, how you say, it's like a documentary based on what an artist have to go through. So like a day-to-day -day lifestyle of an artist and ups and downs, the pretty carousels and, oh, yeah. and all of that. Oh, yeah. What, what, tell, me, tell us this. What has been one of the biggest uh, obstacles that you've had to hurdle in your career? Well, it's the audition process, the recording process, the stage development. Um, pretty much um, what an artist has to go through is a lot of neglect. Sometimes, that's what I've been through in this business. Uh, making the record, getting the record out to executives, A&R people. It's, it has become a struggle. Sometimes it has your highs, sometimes you have your lows. And I, I'm just one of those artists who are determined to keep, keep going. So let's say I'm an artist, or I right. want to be an artist, yes. right? Yeah. Um, 17 years old, mm -hmm. I'm a high school senior, mm -hmm. and I decide I want to be an R&B singer. Yeah. What, how do I get started? What do I do first? Pretty much, there's a lot of showcases out right now. You can become a singer by joining showcases. American Idol is a big outlet for young artists to become part of. You can even become part of it by auditioning in the X Factor. Um, I'm pretty much doing it the old-fashioned way, you know, recording demos and submitting it to the uh, record companies. I'm doing it. The, I'm selling. When I say I do it the old-fashioned way, I'm getting down. I'm submitting it to like everybody, whoever's willing to listen. Now the internet is a big market right now. You can promote yourself by the internet. <laughs> well, I mean, is, 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 is anyone really listening now? I know that we have a lot of social medias, yeah, uh, yeah. such as Facebook, uh, yeah. which is like the leading one. It used to be MySpace. Uh, Twitter. Twitter is uh, yeah. some things that Facebook, you can use. Facebook. Reverb Nation is pretty big right now. Um, Sonic Bit, um, Cloud, SoundCloud. Um, what else? There's so many. There's over 100 different media outlets right now. You can promote. Just support yourself. I guess, LJ, is it important? To be even, let's say even if you are a, a nephew of a, um, I don't know, one of the OJs. Um, hell, I don't know. Uh, if you have, a, 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 if you Whitney Houston is in the news right now, right? You know, and and God, you know, rest yes. in peace, Whitney. Yes. But if you were Whitney's cousin or niece or nephew or whatever, you know, and you wanted to get into uh, singing, you wanted to be an R and B performer, lyricist. You have that niche. You yeah. can call Whitney and Whitney can call her people. Yeah. But for someone who comes from a rural area that has a voice mm -hmm. and they want to be heard, they, they want to sing, mm -hmm. what are some things that they can do to get themselves out there? Well, you know, having a name, a last name like Houston or Richie, it's, you have an advantage there. Mm -hmm. You tend to just crawl in there easily. Um, it's to me. It's still a hustle because you have to prove yourself either to be the best, better, or bigger than them. Just like um, like, um excuse me, but um, what's his name? Uh, Presley, this, the daughter. You know, you all think gonna get compared to your sibling or your parent. So you have to either prove yourself to be bigger than them or worthy of the business. Because right now, anybody can become an artist. Oh, Anybody's right. making records right now on the. There's a thing online that you can make demos on. Of a, you know, submit. Oh, or should, let me just rephrase that. You can demo yourself by uh, of the way of YouTube right now. All right. You can make records. Of As a matter of fact, speaking of YouTube, do you have a YouTube link? Yeah, I do. It's um, you can actually go on my um official YouTube. It's under Kilo Three Thousand, which is my official channel, 
and you can also follow me on um, um, twitter.com backslash LJ Ugarte. Let's do one thing. First thing for now, you said Kilo. Yes. Is that K-E-L-L-O? It's K-E-Y-L-O-W 3000. Give it to us. It's, it's K-E-Y-L-O-W 3000. It's my official LJ Ugarte official YouTube channel which you can find everything I video blog I'm pretty big on video blogging right now and I do my day to day mm -hmm. I video blog and I do journals on there I am DB I no I am DB anything you have anything like that well I have Facebook you guys can mm -hmm. follow me on Facebook like my official fan page um, I also do the day to day you guys can follow my journey in the business um, it's of course www.facebook.com backslash lj.ugarte and everything you guys need to know about my career in my films and as well as some of my magazine covers you guys could go ahead and like it put in your input tell me what you think you know appreciate that okay and, and with that being said before we go to break I want to let you know let you in on something when we come back mm -hmm. I want to know more about what inspired you or who inspired you mm -hmm. so basically what was your inspiration for getting into R&B lyricism, mm -hmm. okay? Awesome, and awesome. we're going to show right now, we're going to go and show your part of your day oh, yeah. in Atlanta, oh, coming yeah. from West Palm Beach. Oh, yeah. And we're going to go to commercial, and we're going to be right back with more Real Talk. Don't you touch that, uh. from the break and we are sitting here I'm sitting here with LJ Ugarte all the way from West Palm Beach Florida to Atlanta Georgia and showing us how they do it in oh, yeah. in uh, Florida style so before we went to break I posed a question and that question was who or what inspired you to become an artist man it goes back to when I was, I, I believe, five years old. I remember having a cassette of... So that was like six years ago? <laughs> like ten now? Yeah. For, well, come I'm, on, look at this no face. I'm, I'm only 12, so, you know, just, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> Trying to be uh, hard. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so okay. check this out. I um, had a cassette of um, Lionel Richie's Dancing on the Ceiling uh, that it belonged uh, to my sister. And I had the Teddy Ruxpin, the boombox. <laughs> you know, I used to put the cassette in the Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, I remember putting the cassette in and thinking I could actually dance on the ceiling. I remember laying back there, I was just laying there and put my, my feet on the wall and I almost believed in my mind that I could dance on the ceiling. That was pretty much it for me. I was like, man, that's just cool music. It started with that. Then Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was a huge inspiration, just like millions of other artists out there. Michael Jackson inspired me to pretty much tell a story. Um, I chose to be in this business not because I have a spectacular voice. I never thought that I had a spectacular voice. I thought I could tell a story. That's why I chose to be a singer, okay. uh, a recording artist, because I, I see myself more of telling a story, getting my message across. And that's the only way that I could be able to express myself as a person. You know, every one of us have insecurities. Mm -hmm. Every one of us feel, sometimes we doubt ourselves. I, and I've known personal friends of mine could tell you that I doubt myself all the time. So, but when I get up there and sing, I'm a totally different person. I'm, uh, man, I think I can fly. I'm the man of the moon, you know what I mean? I'm fine. Okay. That's my way of expressing. You just, yeah. um, you just dropped a, a several names, um, um, and I was just thinking R. Oh, Kelly when you just said, I believe I can fly. <laughs> but, but, but uh, you know, yeah. R. Yeah. Kelly, yeah. but anyway, he's a great that's artist. another, he's that's another a great, story. Great guy. R. Yeah. Kelly is definitely uh, a great, great guy. Yeah. But you talked about uh, Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson, yeah. and a lot of other people. Uh, let's talk about some of the new artists, uh, Neo, yeah, um, J. Cole, um, J. Cole, Usher. Chris well, Usher, you know, some of the ones, Chris Brown, yeah. that's in the media right now, yeah. you know, is, it, is, is on, on, on the forefront right. and making it happen. Mm -hmm. What are you going to bring different? Are you going to bring a different twist? Because it seems that we have the same old thing, the same old, same old, over and over and over. Yeah. No one is doing anything different, yeah. and it's time for someone to break the mold. Yeah. Are you one of those bro mold yeah. breakers? I would. And, and if so, yeah, yeah. what makes you, what are you doing differently than they have already done? Well, the thing that I want to captivate is bringing back the style that was once 
in the past, such as the music from the 80s and 90s that was pretty much telling a story. Not that I'm saying that none of these artists today are telling a story, but I want to bring back the grown and sexy type of vibe. I want to bring back like the You Are My Lady, you know, Freddie Jackson. I want to bring back on old jams. I want to be able to just bring back that smooth, jazzy type of music that we're lacking today. Mm -hmm. Right now it's, um, I'm a big fan of the new stuff today, the Rihanna's new stuff today, uh, Carrie Helson and amongst those other artists. I'm a huge fan of them, but I want to bring back that old 90s flair. Uh, I kind of got heat for it for mm -hmm. recording. I believe a lot of people thought it was too mellow and too jazzy mm -hmm. for my style. But I said that's, uh, I, I've been getting a lot of respect from the grown and sexy. I call them the grown and sexy. Mm -hmm. That's the word here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to bring back that old flair. Um, lots of people really appreciate that. Like, wow, man, I, I had my first kid with that vibe. You know, I had twins with that vibe. And I, that's the type of records that I want to make. Did you bring in the music today that we can have our listeners to check oh, out? Oh, sure it can. You guys yeah. can listen to my single, I Believe in Love, which I wrote and executive produced. I Believe in Love. Oh, yeah. We're going to bring, we're going to show you just, a, we're going to give you just a little bit of that little sound bite of that so you have an idea because I know you're wondering who is this little guy coming yeah. from uh, Miami by the way what is, what is your uh, national origin um I'm Hispanic black and Japanese okay so he's a trial try he's a triple threat yeah. Hispanic African American African American and Negro and, and, <laughs> and Japanese oh yeah all right all bigger, bigger. it's like throwing paint together just mix it and they create it that's called an abstract. <laughs> so we make you an abstract. Just take some paint on the wall, damn it, and just throw it on the wall. <laughs> Is it throwing a whole bunch yeah. of stuff, cooking, stirring the Picasso pot? Picasso. Yeah, oh stuff. yeah. No. Yeah, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. That's what really music is about. Is how you feel, what your experiences are, and how those things entail, how they tell a story yeah. about you or someone else's story. Yeah, just be creative. You know, some artists get a lot of slack for being too, too different, but I have so much respect for artists like that. Awesome. I really do. I, 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 I respect anybody who gets up there and sings. Who's your favorite artist, by the way? Man, I have so many. Uh -oh. Do you have time? Yes, have I got time. We can, we can roll the table and cut it. All, all, all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so who is, if you just had to narrow um, it down, past yeah. or present, yeah. who would it be? Um, my all-time favorite that I will always forever love and respect will always be Michael Jackson. And if you could perform with any artist, past or present? Who would it be? Whew, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. <laughs> the All one right. and only. All right. Yeah. What genre of music do you uh, do? You do? Uh, pop R&B. Pop R&B. Yeah. Which would be similar to a hook? Um, I got compared to Eric Benet. Okay. I got compared to Eric Benet. I got compared to um, Lionel Richie. Mm -hmm. I am also compared to Maxwell. Yeah. All, right, all three of those are great oh, artists, yeah. and we're gonna go to break real quick, and and, and uh, we'll come back. We're gonna wrap up, but before we go to break, drop that email address and that uh, contact information. Again. Oh yeah, you guys just be sure to check me out on Twitter. You know, twitter.com backslash lj ugarte, and of course, you know the same goes to you know Facebook. So www.facebook.com backslash lj ugarte. And of course, always get ready for more of Real Talk Raheem, and we're gonna be talking about everything. From the Obama administration to Whitney Houston's death, um, we're going to have um, some, uh, some forethought, some back thought, some 2020 hindsight, whatever. We're going to be talking about that and just getting a reaction from some of the people in Atlanta. So as we continue to bring you stuff and, and you maybe you don't like or you don't agree with what we're talking about, that's fine if you don't agree with it. We can agree to disagree. Real talk is going to become more and more controversial. It's going to become more and more in your face. And a lot of people basically are not going to like it. But we have a particular demographic that we service. And perhaps maybe you're not a member of that demographic. But just try to have a, an open mind. The demographic that we service from 18 to 48 years of age, the intelligent, open-minded uh, uh, adult. So if you don't have an open mind and you're so holy, you're, you're so heavenly bound that you are no earthly good, then maybe my show is not the show for you. But if you're looking for change, then Real Talk is your spot. And remember to shoot me an email. Send me an email. Remember to send me an email to realtalkwithraheem at gmail.com. As you see it right there on the bottom of your screen, uh, send an email to me and request some things that you'd like to talk about or give in comments. You can also follow my blogs on, uh, what am I on? Follow my blog on <laughs> Raheem is real 
www.blogspot.com. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, your new project that you're working on well, and where we can get a sneak preview of you? Well, actually, like I mentioned earlier before, mm -hmm. it's a behind the scenes documentary. Mm -hmm. Sort of, this is my version of mm -hmm. the This Is It. Just to get an inside look of what artists got to go through be between the audition process, the casting, everything. Mm -hmm. And that's in development right now, as well as this horror film mm -hmm. that I'm executive producing. Mm -hmm. I'm also writing the film. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, I'm writing the film as well. And it's a pretty creepy horror story right now. It's di I can't really disclose too much, but you guys be sure to follow me on Twitter and I'll keep you guys up to date on that. Okay. Yeah. And you have another project that you're working on, I think, that you, you, you mentioned to me about it. Um, Extra Magazine. Yeah. 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 I'm excited about that. Extra mm -hmm. Magazine has been really great mm -hmm. with me. And I'm, I'm forever grateful mm -hmm. that they contacted me and they're interested and wanted to interview me. So big ups to Extra Magazine. So I'll hopefully you'll be on the, on, the, on the magazine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm so not, excited. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, I actually um, yeah. graced the magazine cover and the centerfold yeah. Oh, yeah. in the um, October 2010 edition. Yeah. So um, oh, that yeah. was a, that was a great experience. Um, are there any other awards or accomplishments that you have? Yeah, I'm actually was featured on the cover of Alizon magazine. Big ups mm -hmm. to Alizon; they've been great to me. Mm -hmm. um, they gave me my first cover, and I'm also uh, an award-winning actor. I'm a, um, a thespian award winner of 2000, which is like the South Florida version of. Um, of uh, the Tony for acting on stage, mm -hmm. so a I'm small pretty, scale, but it's a small scale, yeah. but I'm I'm honored for that. I remember right. winning that. I was like, oh, they actually yes. like me, you know. <laughs> so I'm honored for that, and um, hopefully sometime in the near future, as my roles get bigger and my film roles, you know, get a lot bigger, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, bigger awards. But I'm not in this business to win awards. I'm I'm trying to entertain the world, you know, bless everyone with you know. I just want to sing. Yeah, I just, you know, just want to sing. I want to yeah. make records. <laughs> I want to tell stories. You know, mm -hmm. God bless you know everyone that's giving me a chance to work. So I'm I'm glad. I'm forever grateful. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, Oprah Oprah Winfrey uh, was quoted once saying that there is no big secret in life. Yeah, the big secret in life is that you can have anything you want if you're willing to work for it. Right. Oh, yeah. You gotta be willing to do the work. So Hard work. just continue oh, yeah. to um, do what you do. Two to five years from now, mm -hmm. L.J. Ucardi, what do you see yourself doing? Well, I hope to be in everyone's hearts. I hope that I am accepted as an entertainer, and I'm hoping that um, that America and the world would give me a chance to express myself. That's all I ever asked. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm not in this business because I, I think I'm spectacular. I have a spectacular voice. I'm a storyteller. I'm here to maybe inspire someone. Um, reach for the stars. The sky's the limit. Um, there's a lot of people that need someone to look up to. And I hope I'm that individual. I hope I'm that person that everyone can look up to. You know, say that if LJ Ugarte can make it, so can I. And that's the kind of role model I would like to be. You know, you, you know, my, my, my pastor, E. Dewey Smith, over at uh, the Greater Travelers Rest Baptist Church yes. in uh, Decatur, Georgia. I'm a member of that church. Yes. And one of the things that he said was that in his sermon on Sunday was following on the death of uh, Whitney Houston. Yeah. And he was talking about, uh, he, it was uh, 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 Kurt Franklin, yes. uh, renowned uh, gospel singer, well-known yes. yes. gospel mogul. Mm -hmm. mogul. Uh, was quoted saying that uh, Whitney died, the cause of Whitney's death was because of her success. Um, and sometimes when people, and basically what he was saying is that a lot of people, a lot of critics and other, and other people came down very hard on Kurt Franklin saying that this is a time that Whitney has, you know, her family is going through this. People don't need to be saying things, no, you know, like, like that. No. But in hindsight and listening to what my pastor was saying, and I can understand now what Kurt meant by that. Getting, becoming famous is a, uh, it's a hard job, yeah. but it's not the hardest job. No. The hardest thing is to keep it once you get it. You see the, for example, look, look at the foreclo uh, foreclosure rate. Right, oh yeah. It's easy to get a house, it's not that easy to get one, but it's easy to get a house in one year because you have good credit and because you have good financial stability. Yeah. But to maintain that dwelling mm -hmm. for 30 years, mm -hmm. when you could get a layoff, you could get fired, you could have to be, uh, your job could 
you know, move to another state. You could get hospitalized yeah. or get in the accident. Celebrities mm -hmm. have a tendency to make it, mm -hmm. and then after they make it, yeah. they have a problem with keeping it. Bad choices. I Bad choices. So, you know, where do you see, uh, what are some words of wisdom that you have for some of the up-and-coming artists that may be further along than you are, yeah. or may not be as far along as, uh, long as you are, but they need that wisdom. Getting it is easier than keeping it. What is your comment on that? Well. I have to say that celebrity these days is extremely easy with all the stuff that's on television right now. So, um, no disrespect to anyone of any one of the reality market or anything, but most of these shows are sh making anyone a celebrity. So, um, famous these days is easy, but the thing that's really hard is being rich because you have to work extremely hard to stay rich. Um, earning an income to be able to, just like a regular nine to five job, you have to work. You have to really get down and go. Whatever it is that you do, you could be a, a, a maid servant or driver, you have to really work for your paycheck. You have to really get down and work. Um, a lot of these younger cats out there become instant successes and they haven't even worked a day in their lives or they haven't even really struggled. Um, I'm, the, I'm a type of individual that believe in working. If you really want to achieve success, you really have to work to keep it. You mm -hmm. want to be more than just 15 minutes. You don't want to just be here today and gone tomorrow, and the next thing you know, you're in debt, foreclosed, and God knows what. So my best advice is to just, um, just get down there and really find your true calling and make that your passion. Whatever it is that you do, that you continue to do it. My passion is what I do right now. It's always been my passion. I've, I've been told once that I didn't have an ambition. Can you believe that someone actually had the audacity to tell me that, you know what, you don't work hard enough and you don't have any ambition. Why are you still pursuing this? I think we, I think that yeah, we it's, should, it's okay to tell people yeah, it's to kiss of, my, uh, part of my body that I sit on. I mean, yeah, it starts it, with a letter A. We don't allow people yeah, it was, to, to, to dictate our life, where we going. Yeah, and to me, I just looked at, I looked at that individual, I was just like, Wow, have you not seen anything I have done? You obviously didn't, because what I do for a living takes a lot of work and a lot of struggle. Um, I've been fortunate to get some great gigs. I've been fortunate to be featured in some of the best international covers in the world. I've been extremely blessed to be featured in um, international radio. Um, I've also had a radio show at one time um, on the Blog Talk Radio, and also crossed over the satellite at one point. And, um, just this individual saying that to me was kind of like, wow, that's kind of your insecurity because of, you see that a person like, like myself or the next person is working. Well, we know that we know that hurt people hurt. Yeah, people. and um, yeah. bitter people tend to want to insult. That's why I don't read a lot of the celebrity gossip blogs too much because a lot of these um, bloggers want to insult another entertainer for making it. I don't worry about what the next person is doing. You know, I um, try to stay focused and try to. Stay Stay on the straight and narrow. I don't hate on anyone. I, I, any like I mentioned before, anyone who gets up there with a microphone, or if you're an actress, a singer, or comedian, you're doing your thing and you love it. Respect their passion. Respect their hustle. Don't knock them. What are you gonna do once you make all these tons and tons of millions and millions of dollars? Um, artists have a tendency of making all this money or bread. Make all this bread. And then they got to get the Rolls Royce, they got to get the Porsche, they got to get the Bentley, they got to get the big house, they got to go in and make it rain. Mm -hmm. But they're not doing anything, they're not giving back <laughs> not. to the community. You got another kid out there that's got a snot ass nose and a sagging ass pamper. Mm -hmm. Mama and someone shaking her ass in the club, and I'm just being yeah, serious. Yeah, Mama shaking real. her ass yeah. in the club. Yeah. Needless to say that the child is the one that's suffering with grandma or grandpa. Yeah. Grandma and grandpa is on a fixed income, and they're doing the best they can to take care of these children. What that... And, what are you going to do to give back to the community? Well, I also, I'm glad you mentioned that because I also have a, um, something that I'm putting together through my music. It's called the World's Been People Foundation. It's actually um, a, pretty much a foundation to give back. It's for artists, young artists, to be able to come to the facility and make something of themselves. Do Show your creative outlet. Um, to me, Rolls Royces and Bentleys and houses and all that, that's just materialistic stuff. I, I've been blessed to live in a, a great home and, and um, 
drive a moderate car and you know earn a good living doing what I do but all that high and mighty fancy stuff some of that stuff you see on television is an illusion it's show business um, to me that's not the most important thing yeah it would be nice to be riding around in a, in a Rolls Royce and a Mercedes yeah but I would feel 100% fulfilled when I've earned it the right way not renting a car like most of them do I'm not knocking them but I'm just saying that some of them do that, you know, it's right. an illusion, like they show, oh yeah, I'm driving around in a Mercedes, and really, you're driving around in a Mercedes, but your house is in foreclosure, or, you or your taxes, and why the you're hell are all these, tax leering, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, one celebrity yeah. after another, yeah, and I'm saying, it's ridiculous, I mean, uh, it's, it's a lot, but what it's just are like, you no. gonna do to give back to the society, to these little naughty heads, naughty nose kids that's going out selling drugs, that's Killing. going out standing on the street. Do you know on the streets yeah. of Atlanta, you don't know this because you're from West Palm Beach. Yeah. You can go right downtown in Midtown right now, and you got young 19, 21, 25 year old males out there selling their posterior, their rectum. Wow. To get money, these guys yeah. are male prostitutes yeah. to get money. I've heard stories. Either it's because they the glitz and glamour, yeah. or it's because of, of a sexual need, or because of a financial gain. Mm -hmm. Regardless of whatever it is, I don't think that young black men should have to relegate to 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 putting that themselves on the street, to selling their bodies to predators. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's from from Georgia it's near and far, that's yeah. coming down saying, "I want to buy a piece of A." Yeah. I want to buy a yeah. piece of dick. Yeah. I think that it's time for us to get a grip. Yeah, and it's and and, 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 and a lot yeah. of that starts right here with people like you putting the right stuff in your lyrics. Other than what I got and what I'm effing, mm -hmm. is what I'm doing, who I'm helping, and who I'm financing. Right, and it's it's to me it's a bit disturbing, especially these little 15, 16 year olds. Mm -hmm. They should be going to school, getting an education. You know, um, I've heard stories coming into Atlanta about. That stuff that goes on in the downtown area, and it's, it puzzles me. And in the back of my mind, it's like, gosh, what what can I do? You know, sometimes I feel like, what what am I supposed to do? The, I can only what I can do is the best I can do is probably inspire them to get an education, go to school, get a decent job. One of the things that I want to say because these these kids are not you got to understand. The kid, did you really want to go to school when you were in school? When I was in school, you know what? Did you really? School? Yeah, absolutely. You really loved yeah, to go to school? I did because I was a bookworm. You but know, let me tell you something. Boy, you grew you know, up in a nice house, moderate I, home. Um, you know, I grew up right? in Brooklyn, New York. Originally. And how old were you when you got your first car? When I got my first car, I didn't get my first car until I was 21. Okay. I got my first car when I was 16. A lot of this stuff becomes peer pressure. Right, right. So kids don't have it. They hate to go to school because of what they don't have. Yeah. And by the way, I was one of those poor kids who yeah. went to school like that, and I got picked on. Yeah. But I realized that I didn't like the way I was in, and I needed an education to get myself out of that situation. Right. Yeah. And I know I had to have that, but kids now, this is a different time. Yeah, getting harder now. My mother and father were, yeah. were both there in the home, and they raised me. They read me. I didn't agree with everything they said, mm -hmm. but they were there. Yeah. You know, I didn't agree with everything they did, but yeah. they were there. And Same when here. I was in the wrong, they corrected me. Mm -hmm. And um, don't be shy. Be sure to hit your boy up, you know? Say something. Say what's up. I saw your show. Hey, I like your songs. Anything. I'll reply to everybody. I'm cool like that, y'all. Y'all hit me up. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's what's up. <laughs> you know? So, on all, and on yeah. that note, yes. you have just been entertained by my main man, LJ Ugarte. Yes. Check out some of his music. Make sure that you go on Reverb yeah. Nation and... Every and listen day. to some of his music, download some of his songs, and let's support the brother. And hopefully this brother is going to come back and support us. He's going to come back and support um, our young people. And hopefully he'll be, become a role model and do something different than what all of the big name uh, celebrities who do not reach back. You have to always reach back. Each one should reach back and help one. Uh, you, again, you've just been entertained on Real Talk. Raheem. Remember to continue to check us out each month. Check out my blogs on blogspot.com. You can go to raheemisreal.blogspot.com. Once again, thank you for watching your favorite show on Real Talk. Raheem, peace.